degrading experiences. The commandment Avdiev, who had received the sinister title of commandment of the special purpose house, lived with his assistants Alexander Mushkin and Pavel Medvedev, both workmen and his other associates in the upper story in the close proximity to the prisoners. They subjected the Tsar and his family to the utmost degradation which persons of refinement and breeding could experience. Drunken criminal types, human scum, such, such as always floats on the surface of every revolution. They pried and searched and stole, forced their loathsome familiar, familiarities upon their helpless victims, sat side by side with them at the table, elbowing them and lolling against them, nauseating them with the maladors of their unclean bodies, put their dirty hands in the plates, spat on the floor, sang obscene songs, wounded the modesty of the girls otherwise, with filthy scribblings and drawings on the walls by crowding around the lavatory used in common by the prisoners and the guards, joking and commenting as they passed, drunken, smoking, stealing, they reeled about the house, inspiring disgust and terror. So low had the Romanovs fallen. The prisoners were allowed only a quarter of an hour daily in open air. The Tsar, who had ample exercise and air at Tobolsk, suffered greatly from his from this confinement. The Tsarina was overcome with their misfortunes. The boy remained a cripple, unable to walk. In this time of sorrow and, degrade, and degradation, their only consolation was religion, defined by the Bolshe Their only consolation was religion, defined by the Bolsheviki on their official banner as the opium of the people. Above the vile songs sung by the guards at night, the voices of the family could be heard chanting the song of the church. The Advent of Yurovsky. In some way, the Camarilla of Yekaterinburg, perhaps even Moscow, got wind of these new developments and of the dis disaffection of both Avdiev and the guards. Avdiev was at once dismissed and the Russian guards transferred to premises across the lane. Only Medvedev was allowed to retain his post as chief warder. Sentry duty was continued only for the outside post to deceive the public. These changes were made at the order of the new commandment, Yankel Yurovsky. Yurovsky was a sinister and mysterious figure. He was a small shopkeeper in Yekaterinburg, the son of a Jewish convict. He had been in the pay of the Germans and had become one of the chiefs of the local extra, extraordinary council for combating the counter-revolution. His appointment brought doom to the captives. He installed a squad of 10 so-called Letts who acted as guards and took charge of the machine guns. It has been long believed that these men were Letts, but the official investigation disclosed the fact that they were Magyars. Some of the Magyars, some of the Magyarized Germans. It is surmised that they were former Austrian soldiers who helped the Sovietizing of Russia and entered the Extraordinary Council in order to further the Russian-German design of undermining Russell. However, this may be a considerable number of proofs exist. A considerable number of proofs exist that they were not Letts but Hungarians. The Russian guards saw from their speech that they were foreigners. It was natural to suppose from Letts. It is true because the Letts were the backbone of the Soviets' foreign mercenaries. Furthermore, the Magyars resemble the Letts in appearance and accent. There is even a racial relation between them. Yurovsky, who only knew who knew only Russian. Yiddish and German spoke to them in a foreign language. One of these lets left an unfinished letter to Magyar to his Tereshin. It was filled with mistakes and was evidently the Magyar of Magyarized German. Another wrote his name, Andres Verhas, followed by the Magyar word Orsagin, which meant guard duty, which he had tried to translate into Russian, but could not spell out. On scraps of paper, other guards had practiced writing Russian words. Yurovsky and these hired assassins were in control when the nuns made their last visit bearing provisions to the captives. This last visit occurred on July 10, 1918, about a week before the murder. Some of the transferred Russian guards looked confused and were unwilling to take the gifts. They finally did so, and the nuns stuttered away. They were recalled to the presence of Yurovsky. He inquired their authority for bringing the provisions. They answered they had come by the authority of Avdiev and Derevenko. Derevenko. Oh, they are both in it, are they? Yurovsky said ominously. He allowed them, however, to come again. 
but to bring only milk.